Let me have a look. I thought I'd made a note of who is going to treat us with a visit. Aha! What a special visitor we have arriving again. One thing is certain, we will do all we can to make sure this guest has an unforgettable day. Needless to say, the park and palace will have to be inspected to make sure everything is ready. Little Red Riding Hood, it's a pleasure to see you and, and you're so well prepared. Very neat, excellent, Fakir. Ryder Thomas, greetings. I believe everything is fully prepared. Oh, a little too much smoke for my liking. That needs to be looked at. If you are expected soon, be warned. Let's see. How many places do we have to set at the table? Paula, one guest. So, everything is organized down to the smallest detail for our honored guests. That's just the way I like it. Illumina Fantasia! Wow, they're doing all those preparations just for me? Welcome everyone, another day of Travel Jack. And uh, today we're going to a theme park. Now think about a theme park. Uh, it's got a theme park that has, let's see, it has fairy tales like Pinocchio, Sleeping Beauty, Cinderella, that's all in there. It's got a big castle right in the center of the park and a steam train that goes all the way around the whole thing and many people regard it as a very magical place. What kind of a theme park do you think that is? What theme park are we going to today? If you, would, if you said Disneyland, you're wrong. This theme park is called Efteling and it actually opened uh, in the Netherlands. Before Disneyland, if you can believe that, Disneyland opened in 1955. The Efteling, um, excuse me, the Efteling opened in 1952. And uh, there's some Disney tie-ins in there, but um, we've got to go. Uh, today's a very tight schedule and uh, no time to waste. So we got to get to the train station. So uh, everything's packed and uh, you can see the bag looks slightly different because I brought this extra duffel bag for when I buy souvenirs and stuff and uh, it's already coming in handy so and at the end of the trip I'll throw my uh, I'll just throw all my laundry in the duffel bag and check it and then my souvenirs will come with me on the carry-on so I uh, came prepared for that um, pro tip when you travel and you want to pack light but you want room for souvenirs throw in a duffel bag in the bottom of your suitcase one that folds down nice and small and uh, when you need to have more space there you have it so cool anyway we got to get to the train station the very tight schedule today no time to waste we, uh, we got a very tight schedule and um very short night last night I, it, it was planned that way it's just the way it turned out uh, i got maybe two hours of sleep probably less than that but that's okay i'm feeling good and i'm nice and warm uh so far i'm braving the elements and i but so far for the most part i'm keeping dry and warm it's very cold out there especially with the wind Today's weather forecast, high of 49, low of, I want, I want to say 40, and 80% uh, chance of rain and high winds again today. So <laughs> uh, bear with me, folks. I'm sure it'll get better at some point. Uh, and it, I know the, the videos suffer when it's, high, when it's really windy, especially, and the audio is awful, I'm sure. But uh, doing the best we can here while we're traveling in wintry conditions in Europe. Uh, it's been brutal so far with the weather. <laughs> it's been nonstop rain and wind and everything else. So anyway, I got to get checked out. Let's get to the train station and I'll let you know more on the way to the train station. Let's go.
Wow, 5 a.m., the bell, the bell tolls, 5 a.m., and all is well. Uh, what a lovely hotel and a lovely stay here in Harlem. I cannot recommend Harlem enough. I'll never forget it. Uh, this place is wonderful. It's a small town vibe. You don't hear, you're, you're away from traffic and stuff. It's all, everything's walking distance and bicycles. It's nice and quiet around here. And the people have been absolutely wonderful. The Ambassador City Center. I'll be back here for sure uh, if, whenever I return uh, in the future. And the church view room, spectacular. Wow. Unbelievable. So anyway, uh, let's get going. We got to go. And uh, it's about 5 a.m. Our train leaves at 547. That should give us plenty of time to get to the train station. So let's get over there. And uh, today's destination is called, well, the theme park is called the Efteling. Uh, but we need to get to a train station called Den Bosch or Hertogen Bosch, if I'm saying that right. I'm probably saying that completely wrong. And uh, luggage got caught up. Uh, that's where we're headed. Hertogen Bosch or Den Bosch. From there, we take a, a bus that goes to the town of Katschubal. Again, I'm saying that wrong, I'm sure. But uh, that's where we're headed. And uh, from there, I've arranged that uh, the hotel where I'm staying or pick me up in a shuttle bus. And I'm sure it's walking distance too, but they're going to pick me up in a shuttle so I, I, I don't have to worry about getting lost and stuff, which is very nice. I, uh, I reserve it um, personally, so they'll come pick me up, which is a very nice service, by the way. So anyway, let's get to the train station. my rail planner app I encountered something strange I booked a trip from Harlem with a transfer here in Amsterdam to Den Bosch uh, so when I booked it that way it says that the next train leaves at 630 however I, uh, when I book uh, when I did a search for the same train from Amsterdam Central to Den Bosch separately it listed the same train, but leaving at a different time, 6.41. So it lists a 6.30 uh, inner city train, but the final destination should say uh, Maastricht, if I'm saying that right. And that one doesn't say, that one says Deventer. So I think that's not the right one, but it hasn't listed the 6.41 train yet. So I'm waiting to see 6.41 trains come up, if that's gonna be the right one. And it should match up with the final destination that's this train is going to so it either leaves at 6:30 or 6:41. i'm trying to figure out which one it is and which track to go to so just a minute or two uh the 6:41 uh train should show up in a second okay there it is at the bottom of the screen there 6:41 to maastricht via Hertogenbosch right there track 4b inner city that's what we want so it's indeed leaving at 6:41. Track 4B. So that's a strange thing I encountered on the app. Uh, the way I booked it, it says that that same train leaves at 6:30. It's the same train number and everything. But then when I did a separate search to make sure I'm, I've, I've got the right uh, train uh, to match it up with the platform on the screen here, it came up with a different departure time. But it's the same train number and everything. So I, something was up there. But uh, 6:41. Let's get over to Track 4B. Okay, here we are at uh, this place, <laughs> Den Bosch, I'm gonna call it. I hope I'm saying it right, but anyway, from here, here's the train that brought us here. Very cool. First class seats too. So from here, we need to get on a bus. It's called the Arriva Bus Line 300. I have to figure out how to get tickets. I think I just pay on the bus with a credit card. Uh, let's figure that out.
All right, tried to get on one of these buses that goes to the Efteling. I, I am early, I'm ahead of schedule, so I don't have, to, I can wait for the next bus, uh, which is the one I'm supposed to be on anyway. But um, I tried to scan my card, what, if they take a contactless payment, and I used my phone and it didn't work, and I used, tried to use three different credit cards and uh, they had a chip reader too, and none of them worked. I don't know if it's because I'm from the uh, United States and I'm traveling, or I'm not sure what happened, but uh, none of them worked. Uh, four different payment methods and uh, I've been feeling like that they uh, need to work on their system a little bit I, I, I think it's it's a newer system that they're implementing uh, I'm not sure um, but anyway it didn't work so anyway there's this office right here and I think I can pay cash uh, and buy a ticket here so let's see what happens okay here we are on the bus and uh, we made it when I first got on it was standing room only was packed in here. I was like, oh my gosh, I was not going to be like that the whole way. It turns out most people got off at the next stop. It's uh, everyone's going to school. School's about to start, so uh, everybody got off and went to school. Right? So I got a seat pretty quickly. But uh, paid cash for this ticket and uh, scanned right in. I don't know why my phone and my credit cards didn't work, but. Uh, Not sure what that says it's in Dutch so anyway we're on the way should should be about a 40 minute 45 minute bus ride and then we'll be at the Efteling oh by the way the Disney tie-in I didn't tell you that yet so um, Disneyland Park the original Disneyland Park in Anaheim California opened in 1955 and uh, the Efteling where we're going today opened in 1952 three years before Disneyland so Word has it that Walt Disney came and visited the Netherlands when some of his animated films were coming out and they were doing voiceover work for uh, the Dutch voiceovers. So he flew over to the Netherlands to oversee the voiceover work and make sure it's going well. And while he was here, he visited the Efteling theme park. And this was during a time he was thinking about ideas of what he wanted to do with the Disneyland park and what he wanted to build there. And uh, so he visited Efteling. Now, when it first opened, they just had a small little area called the Fairy Tale Forest, which when we were there, we'll check it out. But he saw the Fairy Tale Forest, and they had, you know, all the classic fairy tales like Sleeping Beauty, Cinderella, Pinocchio, and, uh, little dioramas and stuff that you walk through this forest and see these fairy tales. Well, I think he got a lot of inspiration from that and came up with a lot of ideas of what he wanted to do with Fantasyland at Disneyland. So that's pretty fascinating history. I don't know that any of it's documented or photographed, but uh, that's the rumor out there that Walt Disney came and visited the Efteling before Disneyland even opened. So and got uh, some inspiration from it. So once we're there, we'll draw some comparisons uh, between parks and stuff. It should be pretty cool, but um, I've, I've seen a lot of videos in this park and I can't wait to visit it. It looks amazing. So anyway, we're going to be there in a few minutes. The sun's starting to come up too, so I'll show you some views along the way.
here's my hotel. And she told me, uh, by the way, very nice uh, shuttle service included in the price. I gave her a tip too. She said, you don't have to tip me. And I gave her one anyway, a couple bucks. But uh, included in the price. Wow. Very nice. And uh, anyway, she also told me my room's ready already. Normally you don't get your room until after four o'clock. It's nine in the morning. They said my room's ready. So I can go up there and I think I'm going to go put on. It's so chilly right now and cold. It's, I think it's even colder. Uh, I, get, I brought thermal underwear. I'm going to put it on before I head into the parks because I'm really cold already. It's supposed to be windy and rain a little bit later too. So I'm going to bundle up today. So anyway, let's go inside. Check out. Look at this hotel. Unbelievable. Wow. How nice are the, is, are the staff here and uh, uh, my room's already ready to go and uh, up on the fourth floor too so it should be a nice view and uh, anyway let's go check out the room I haven't seen anything yet just got off the elevator so let's go in together and we'll check it out well the hallway isn't themed at all I'm kind of disappointed with the hallway I thought it'd be done better than it's just a plain hallway but uh, it's not what counts, is it? It's the room. So let's go inside. By the way, the uh, digital key is on your phone on the app. It's You enable your Bluetooth and you just hold your phone up to the uh, door and it opens. That's pretty cool. All right, let's go inside. 407 is the room number. Right here. Okay, it worked. Room 407, here we go. The theming here. Do not disturb sign. And this is cool. Little bunk beds up there. You can sleep five in here. Actually, the rooms are quite a bit smaller than I was expecting somehow. But uh, you got two there, you got two bunk beds, another bed here. What is this? You know what this might be? I ordered a souvenir book online before I came here. And they have it in here waiting for me. Is my name on it or no? Huh. That's pretty cool. They have it in here already. Let's check out the view. Uh, well, <laughs> not the nicest view, but <laughs> it's all right. Well, the room itself is pretty nice. Uh, the hallways aren't themed very well and the view's not very nice, at least on this side of the hotel. But not much they can do about that. It looks like some sort of employee parking lot and uh, maybe some work sheds or maybe maintenance yard, yard or something. But uh, anyway, there's not a lot they can do about that. But uh, not every view is going to be uh, like the church view I had in, in Harlem. That was amazing. But uh, there's other hotels here too that you can stay at, and there's little uh, little cottages you can stay in. Of course, those are more expensive. And there's uh, two other hotels as well. And one is the original is the Efteling Hotel, and that's more themed with the fairy tale theming in it. That's if you want the, all that theming, that's the place to stay. And then there's another one called Bosreich, if I'm saying that right. And um, she she taught me how to say this one. I've been saying Luncha Land, but it's, I think she said Loncha, Loncha Land? Something like that. I, I don't speak Dutch. I'm probably Loncha Land, something like that. Anyway, uh, the room looks nice. I haven't looked at the bathroom yet. Let's check out the bathroom. All right, they got a cool bunch of coat hooks here. And also by the door, maybe that's for umbrellas. I bet you that's for umbrellas because right underneath they have the little garbage can there that's probably for wet umbrellas but here's the bathroom and it looks pretty nice there's your toilet nice big mirror here hey everybody uh, so I'm using my phone to film uh, so far this whole trip um, I brought my camcorder with me uh, but I haven't used it because of the weather uh, my phone here is water resistant and my camcorder is not, so 
I haven't uh, brought the camcorder out. I'm going to wait till it's not raining. I don't know when that's going to be. Not any time in the near future. It's supposed to rain for uh, until I don't know when. So, uh, so phone it is for now. And I got my GoPro too. We'll be using that in the parks on the roller coaster as well. But uh, let's check out what we got here. The sink, towel. What is this? Hand soap. Okay. Very good. And then we got the shower. This shower closes up. The one in Harlem didn't close, didn't have doors on it. And everything gets wet when you shower. So. And we got body wash and shampoo right there. And this is an adjustable shower head here. I like this. Yeah. Cool. I had pre-ordered a souvenir book, and I think that's what this is. But it feels like a present. It feels like a gift. They, I, I didn't know they are going to wrap it for me. That's pretty nice. Look at the wrapping paper, by the way. It's themed. There's long neck. You'll see what that is. The donkey. <coughs> These are all things we're going to see in the park. Yeah, it's exactly what I thought it was. This is the souvenir book. So when you open it up, there's different photos and pictures of the park. And uh, there's Long Neck. <laughs> and uh, you're probably thinking, what the heck is that? You'll see. You'll see when we go in the park. And uh, different pictures of the, the, that's in the fairy tale forest there. Just a little sneak preview of what we're going to see in the park. So uh, anyway, souvenir book. I'll be taking that home with me. Really cool. Okay, I turned on the TV and they got different channels here. There's three Efteling channels. Uh, this is more of an information, uh, comes in different languages. Transform yourself into your favorite Efteling inhabitant. Find themed costumes and, you know, they tell you about things like that, stores and food and probably park hours and things like that. But uh, flip up a channel. It's called Efteling Canal H Efteling Channel HD. And they're showing different programming about the park. It looks like they're doing a how they made the attraction kind of show. This one. Spruik's channel? I don't know what that means. Anyway, that looks like a lot of fun. It's in Dutch, so I don't know what they're saying, but it's neat. They got themed channels. I wonder how much programming they have on that. That's pretty cool. So we might watch a little bit of that later on. But uh, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get prepared for the day. Uh, with my hotel stay here, I get early admission. The park opens at 11, but I get to go in at 1030. And she was telling me also there's a little uh, train shuttle that I can take or I can just walk. It's about a 15 minute walk from here to the main entrance and I get early entry. So uh, let me get ready for the for the day and then uh, we'll start our day at Efteling here in the Netherlands. Seen 
so many videos of this place and to be here standing here right now is magical. This is awesome. Okay, we're in. Wow. 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 <laughs> this is great. I got to try not to stop and gaze at stuff too quickly because I got I, there's a ride I want to get on, and if weather's going to turn bad, they might close it down. It's a roller coaster, so I got to get over there. We'll have more time to look at everything a little bit later. They kind of they kind of sent everybody around to the side because everything's closed to the regular guests for another half hour. So. figure out which way I'm supposed to go. All right, Baron, 1898. I've been looking forward to this ride for so long, but got some bad news. All right, due to the uh, weather conditions, they're not operating it right now. Hopefully, uh, before we leave uh, for the next two days, it'll reopen at some point. Uh, man, that's a bummer. I was really looking forward to riding this one. I wanted to get it in early before this weather hit, but it didn't happen. And uh, this rain is coming down really cold. It almost feels like it's sleet, or it could turn into sleet or snow even if it gets a little colder. We'll see what happens tonight. It's supposed to rain tonight too, so it's supposed to drop down to only 40 degrees. So if it does get any snow, it won't probably won't last too long, but uh, it is a cold rain. So anyway, I got to find some cover because I need to figure out what we're going to do now since this ride is closed. That was my that was my plan for the uh, early entry is get on that ride and it's closed. So uh, we'll figure out. I got to find cover to look at the park map. Okay, here's the plan. I'm going to head back towards the main entrance. I'm going to go to the fairy tale forest. I'm hoping that there's a lot of tree cover that will help. Uh, shield me from the rain a little bit and I think there's some indoor areas too so let's head to the fairy tale forest and by the way this is this is where uh, Efteling started the fairy tale forest and where Walt Disney got his inspiration for Fantasyland so let's go check it out okay we finally made it the fairy tale force only took an hour to figure out how to get <laughs> well i also first i went to bear in 1898 and then it was closed and then i came here but it took an hour altogether anyway let's head on in to the spruks spruks boss <laughs> the fairy tale forest let's go inside
de manier met zijn kode adem te vlagen. En al het was nog een kant van de taak. Dan, dat veranderde gewoon toen ze begreep dat de prins haar kwam verlossen. Nu vlucht terug. Ga naar groot goede bloempjes brengen uit het bos, uit het bos. Ga naar groot goede bloempjes brengen uit het bos. Toen ze aanbelden, begon Kakeeltje de tamme kraai zenuwachtig te kraaien.
There you go, charming as can be. The fairy tale forest. Uh, some surprises in there too. Some really good uh, special effect shows in there. You go inside of like a little theater area, and uh, uh, I think my favorite of everything was the uh, the magic mirror scene with uh, Snow White. Uh, that was pretty terrifying. <laughs> uh, that was a lot of fun. Wow, so much interesting things to see. I spent several hours in there. It's it's massive, and uh, I'll put highlights in this vlog. But if you want to see the full walkthrough, I'll put that as a separate video. It's going to be a very long video, a full walkthrough uh, of the fairy tale forest. Fascinating. And I can really see how Walt Disney came and saw this and, and drew a lot of inspiration for, for uh, things he wanted to do at Disneyland. I can see where he got it from. So uh, really fascinating history and Walt Disney tie-in. And... Uh, really historic and I'm, I'm glad they preserved this and it's still there and of course uh, all of that wasn't there at the beginning I'm sure they've added on to it over the years uh, but just charming as can be and interactive and, and the attention to detail is spectacular I love it so anyway let's see what's uh, coming up next at the Efteling Okay, time for some lunch at Polis Kuchen. Something like that. I think that means Pol Polis Kitchen. Anyway, it's a traditional Dutch pancake place. Uh, couldn't pass that up, so let's have some pancakes for lunch. Let's check it out. Okay, thankfully the weather let up for a little bit, so uh, hopefully I can dry off a little bit. I, I'm doing okay, but my bag is wet and <laughs> my hair's a little wet. But uh, came inside to this uh, restaurant for lunch and it's heated, <laughs> thankfully. But I ordered uh, one of the chef's pancakes. I forget what, everything that was in it. Uh, it was the specialty of the seasonal specialty. I think it had mushrooms, onions, and some other things in it in the pancake. Almost sounds like an omelet or a pizza. And also, I got a seasonal beer. I'm not sure what I'm getting myself into either here, but uh, we had three different ones. I picked this one. 
Not sure what it is. They had a blonde, a dark, and this one. So I got this one. That's a neat glass. I like that. So let's try the beer. That's good. Wow. Mm, very good. And they got this thing in front of me. It's got wooden spoons and cakes and all kinds of stuff on it. And it spins around, and every once in a while, it does a big show kind of thing. So uh, I'll try to catch that when it happens next. And uh, pretty cool. Having a good time here at the Efteling. Boots here, and this looks very interesting. It looks like, uh, what is that, arugula on there? And gosh, I'm not even sure what, I'm not even sure what that is. Some kind of pork, maybe? There's bacon on there, apples. Is that apples? What is that? Radish? Looks pretty interesting. Well, all right, let's give it a try. Was that a Dutch birthday? That was cool. <laughs> All right, here it goes. It's pretty interesting. Mm. I can't even tell you what that is, but it's very good. She's trying to tell me what all the ingredients were, but it was all in Dutch, so she couldn't translate it. Try each ingredient one at a time. All right, this thing, it's either radish or apple, or I don't know what that is. It's neither. I don't know what that is. It's very tasty, though. It's a little bit, bit of a sweet taste to it. What is that? That it's really good though. Wow. I only I have no idea what it is. This is some kind of meat, I think. I'm not sure what that is. God, that's flavorful too. Oh my god, that is good. Oh. I have no idea what this is, but it's delicious. Bacon. I know that one. Mmm. Mmm. Wow. I don't know how they prepare that bacon, but that is full of flavor. I mean, this is what... Of course, the pancake. Mm -hmm. All right, let me 
me try it all together now again. It's very good all together. It, it all kind of mixes together when you eat it. The, the flavors really come out when you each when you eat each ingredient separately. Individually, they're all good. But when you mix them all together, I don't know what to make of it. It's pretty good. I really like it. I have no idea what it is. What is that? It's some kind of meat. Is that pork? It's full of flavor, whatever it is. Unbelievable. That is really good. I went, I went for it, and uh, not sure what it was. I still don't know what it is, but it's very good. Hmm. <laughs> The beer is good too. I want to keep this glass. This glass is amazing. Look at it. It's got the gold rim on it. Look at that. And I don't know what it says, but it's some sort of probably something in Dutch. I don't know. Excellent. I'm going to finish this up and then we're going to have uh, a special drink afterwards. So stay tuned for that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Later, <laughs> This looks amazing. So I ordered off of this uh, menu here uh, because it's winter Epteling. They got warm winter beverages. So I got the latte, macchiato, chestnut, and white chocolate. Look at this thing. Wow. Wow. That looks amazing. I can't wait to dig into that. And then it comes with this, I'm assuming it's chocolate. Epteling branded. Look at that. Fantastic. And they gave me a spoon to eat it with. Let's give it a shot here. Look at that. Oh. Oh, that chestnut comes through. Oh my god. Very good. Thing is going crazy again. gonna try one of these white chocolate things too. Oh my gosh. Wow. Very good. I love white chocolate too. I love it. That's a perfect winter drink. Man, that was good. And let me let's see uh, let's see what this is. Very good. White and dark chocolate, I think. And inside, there's something crunchy on the inside, like a crunchy chocolate. Oh, perfect way to end the meal. Mm. All right, I'm going to wrap up this lunch, and we're going to get back in the park and see what's next here at Efteling in the Netherlands. Diorama. No idea what's going to be in here. <laughs> Let's go check it out. <laughs> hey,
It's a spectacular. Uh, this reminds me when I was a kid where I grew up, uh, they had this one of the world's largest uh, model railroad exhibits on display. I don't know if it's still one of the world's largest or if it's even still there or not. But, uh, these modelers would build things like this and uh, uh, run trains all around and they would do a, a light show uh, similar to what you saw on the other side. They do a, a storm would come in with lightning and thunder and then there would be a sunrise and it was really spectacular, and uh, it reminds me of this, but this is like a Dutch version of it. really love this kind of stuff. You can only imagine how long it takes to build something like that with all the attention to detail. Pretty cool. Also on the other side, we've got uh, a little booth where you can buy coffee and snacks, and they've got festive decorations all around. All around here, so. Really nice place, especially when it's raining and cold. A little place to come in and escape and grab a, grab a bite to eat and take a rest. This is spectacular. An old steam-powered carousel has been carefully preserved, still operating today. I don't know if it still operates on steam, but uh, it's probably electricity now. But uh, I asked the operator uh, how old this thing is. He said 1895, which makes it 128 years old, and it's still operating today. That is unbelievable. Uh, I, I never knew such a thing existed. Uh, steam-powered car uh, carousel. Normally I wouldn't ride a carousel, but this one has such historical significance, I couldn't pass it up. Wow.
was a real treat and uh, that not just the carousel but that entire building is in pristine condition wow 128 years old that is unbelievable so anyway uh next we're heading over here to the steam train and uh, i thought i saw a while ago that they had announced that they're taking this out uh they were building some new stuff and they were going to remove this train and uh maybe i misinterpreted what they say because most of their announcements are in Dutch uh, but uh, I was really bummed about that because uh, uh, I think it should stay uh, this looks like a really neat train it goes around the park and uh, they should preserve it and save it and luckily for me it's still here so hopefully we can uh, ride it in a moment so as soon as I can find the station and uh, I'm really happy that I've seen it running today so I'm really happy it's still here and maybe they changed their mind. Maybe they, uh, maybe they announced they're going to remove it and change their mind and decided to keep it. Hopefully that's the case. So anyway, uh, let me find where the station is. Somewhere around here. And we'll ride the steam train. All right, if you're wondering what these are, you'll see these around the park, different different versions of them and stuff. And uh, <laughs> he's saying, uh, paper here, paper here. And uh, I mean, it's a garbage bin. And uh, it's got a suction to it. So if you have a napkin or a piece of paper, you put it right here and it, I don't have anything to put in there right now, but it sucks it right in. And uh, anyway, it's a great idea because it encourages people, it makes it fun to use a trash can. So you don't throw garbage on the ground and uh, what a great idea so uh and they're a lot of fun. they're a lot of fun so anyway uh, you'll you'll see and hear these around the park different versions of them so uh they're garbage bins Okay, let me see if I can get this right. Put in the comments if you know where I get this from, all right? All right. Your attention, please. The Efteling Railroad now departing for a grand circle tour of the world of wonders. All passengers, what? I changed it a little bit. I changed it a little bit. Here it comes.
All right, next up we're gonna go on this attraction. It's called Via Volta. And uh, I've never been on an attraction like this before. As a matter of fact, I'm not sure that they even have these anywhere in the United States that I know of. Correct me if I'm wrong, but if you don't know what it is, I won't spoil the surprise. Let's go check out Via Volta. Nergens in uw eigen huis, nog waar ook ter wereld, zult gij rust of vrede vinden. Nu gij Gods huis geschonden hebt, eerst dan, wanneer een edel mens met het reine geweten van een pasgeboren kind uw woonsteden zal betreden, dan zult gij vrede vinden in uw huis en in uw hart. Die bang, mijn gruwelijk lot is tot op heden niet gebroken. Treed binnen met een reine ziel, opdat de doen valt van dit huis en mijn ziel de rust verkrijgt, waar ik zo hevig naar verlang. Dames en heren, let u op. De deuren openen in uw richting. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand back. The doors will open in your direction.
Via Volta, and I gotta kinda explain what happened on there. I've never been on a ride like that before. I've seen videos of it in the past. But uh, when the ride starts, uh, the bars come down on the seats because the seats you're sitting in swing back and forth. They'll swing like this, uh, back and forth. And uh, so when the ride starts, I actually there was actually swinging up, so I was going back in my seat, but the walls uh, were moving along with the seat. So on the video, it didn't look like anything was moving, but everything was kind of moving, and I was going back in my seat, and then all of a sudden the walls keep moving, and then and then your seat goes the opposite way, and then all of a sudden everything starts spinning, and the walls might be going one way while your seat's going the other way, and it's very disorienting. And uh, so if you've got uh, motion sickness problems, this is not the ride for you. Uh, but uh, yeah, your seats are going back and forth and the walls are spinning around and next thing you're looking at the floor and uh, that's a trip. That's a lot of fun. I really like that. It's called a madhouse. And uh, as far as I know, there's none in the United States that I know of. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but um, I've never seen one of these before. So. I've seen videos of this online. I'm glad I got to come out here and check it out. A madhouse. And uh, from what I understand, there's even better ones out there, but uh, this was one of the first ones ever made. And uh, really cool. I really enjoyed that. Uh, very unique ride concept. That's really cool. Uh, I'll have to do the translation on the pre-show. I don't. There's a story that goes along with it. And I don't have any idea what they were saying. So uh, later on, I'll do a translate. And, and, figure out what's going on in there because there's a whole story and a pre-show and everything but um via volta very exciting all right uh let me check out the map and we'll figure out what's going on next Pretty spectacular day, and uh, we're heading over here to catch uh, the nighttime show here. It's a show called Aquanura, and it's the third largest water show in the world, uh, according to the manufacturer. And I'm wondering what shows they're talking about. So there's the uh, Dubai show, there's the Bellagio water show, and I wonder how they count World of Color in there. Does that count? I'm not sure. Uh, but anyway, so we're along here on the water, and we're about to watch. Uh, Aquanura coming up in just a few minutes, but uh, tomorrow we got, got a second day here in the park, and we spent most of the day in the fairy tale forest. Did a lot of filming there, got that out of the way, and so tomorrow we should have plenty of time to hit all the rest of the rides that we didn't see today. So uh, there's a lot of dark rides and roller coasters and stuff to see. So uh, tomorrow we'll be checking that out. But right now we're going to check out a performance of Aquanura. And then we'll head back to the hotel and have a little dinner before uh, we wrap up the video. So enjoy this performance, Aquanora at Efteling in the Netherlands. Let's check it out. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one.
Wow, what an ending to the night. Very emotional moment uh, that I finally got to be here and witness that. And uh, what an amazing park. It really does have a magical quality to it. And uh, fantastic. Wow, that Aquanur show, unbelievable. Just a fantastic show. Really put the uh, uh, exclamation point on the night. And uh, a lot more to come tomorrow. There's a lot we didn't see today. Uh, but wow, fairy tale forest blew me away, and uh, the theming in the park is fantastic. And um, I'm, I, I compare this park a little bit to Disney. It's not fair to do that because Disney's budget is far superior, and of course they've got better animatronics and stuff like that. But the, the level of theming and detail and uh, 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 care that goes into the theming and the whole experience here and the entertainment and the rides it's second to none. I mean, uh, you, you have you can compare it to Disney in those regards. I'm sure they have a much smaller budget, but the, to, for the for a company that has one theme park to put on a water show like that, wow, unbelievable! So that that just that's just testament to how much uh, they care about uh, the experience uh, and the the love of the uh, this theme park here and uh, everything they put into it. Look at that. Unbelievable. So, uh, fantastic. We'll be back for more tomorrow. I'm glad I got that uh, Aquanur show. I am absolutely freezing. It's in the 40s. It's close to 40 degrees. And I was getting showered with that water while holding my phone up to film it. And my, I couldn't feel my hands at the end of the show because they were wet and it's cold and it's windy. So, uh, I'm walking back to the hotel. And we're going to have dinner. Yeah, but what an end of the night. Fantastic. Efteling. We did it. We're here. Wow. Unbelievable. Okay, let's get back to the hotel. I'm cold. <laughs> For some reason, the entrance to this hotel reminds me of Gaston. Anyway, as, as I was walking back to the hotel, uh, just as I started walking, it started downpouring again. So uh, my jacket's doing its job. It's keeping me dry, except for my hair and my hands a little bit. But other than that, uh, it's just cold and windy. If it wasn't so windy, it'd be a little better. But um, anyway, while we're here in the lobby, uh, let me show you around a little bit and see what's uh, around here. So right across from the uh, souvenirs and reception over here uh, is the restaurant. Don't know how to pronounce it, but uh, I got dinner reservations here right now. So we'll be heading on inside there to eat. Let's check it out. Also, right inside the front door over here, you've got your park maps, uh, all in different languages too. So um, Also, they have information about a show. I'm going to see it tomorrow night. It's called Caro. And uh, more about that on the next video tomorrow that I record tomorrow. But uh, anyway, let's get checked in for our dinner reservation. Use antlers in all of my decorating. That's Gaston. Anyway. Uh, so here at the table, they already have sparkling and still water ready and um, uh, a QR code to look at the menu. I haven't even looked at it yet. And uh, we'll see what's on the menu for dinner. Okay, I'm starting with a beer and they've got this exclusive beer just for this hotel. It's called the Lonsaland Lonsaland Blonde Ale. So this will be very interesting. Made just for Efteling and, the, and this hotel specifically. That's pretty cool.
goes down smooth. <laughs> okay, I went with the menu, so I got to pick um, a starter, a uh, main course, and a dessert. So the starter I went with, because of the cold, wet uh, weather, I went with tomato soup today. And it uh, comes with bread and pesto, which looks to be uh, pretty fresh, maybe house-made, and some croutons. So let's, uh, let's give this a try. Oh, that's good. That's definitely a house made pesto. Excellent. Very good. Mm. That was good. It reminds me when I get to Italy, I'm staying in the Cinque Terre, and that is the birthplace of pesto, is where it was invented. So uh, I can't wait to have some of the meals over there in Italy too. Looking forward to that. This is really good. Mm. It's very good. I don't normally get soup, but because of the weather today, I just felt like I needed something warm. Right, I went ahead and got the uh, steak, and uh, it's a ribeye steak, and it looks like there's two sauces on it. This looks amazing, and also got. Uh, I was debating between a uh, baked potato and uh, mushrooms, and I was feeling like mushrooms today. I love mushrooms, and uh, just seems like on a day like today it would go good. Let me try some of this sauce here. First, there's a yellow one. Yeah, is that mustard? Looks like mustard. It's not mustard. It's barely got any flavor. I don't know what it is. I can't even notice hardly any flavor. It's very, very mild. And then there's a sauce. I'm hoping this isn't barbecue sauce, but let's see what it is. It's not barbecue, but it's very good. I don't know what kind of sauce that is. I really like that sauce. All right, let's get a taste of the steak. So I ordered it medium well. Looks like it's almost medium, but that's fine with me. Let's try it. very good. It's very tender. It's ribeye steak, so it has a little bit of fat content, but that brings out a lot of flavor. Excellent. I'm glad this sauce isn't mustard sauce <laughs> or barbecue. I'm not sure what kind of sauces these are, but they're perfect for the, the steak. I'm treating myself. I rarely have steak these days. I try to avoid red meat as much as possible, but I'm on vacation right now, so I'm enjoying. Oh, yeah. Mm. Very good. All right, let's try some of these mushrooms. I love mushrooms. A lot of people don't like mushrooms, but I love them. Looks like it's got green onions. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Oh, that's good. All right, I'm gonna finish up this meal. Oh man, excellent. I'm gonna finish this up and then um, get back to you when dessert gets here.
right, this looks fancy. It's got um, obviously vanilla ice cream, whipped cream, and chocolate, blueberries. I don't know what that is. Chocolate, maybe? Chocolate sliver? Mm hmm. That's exactly what it is. There's mint on there. I don't know what that is. It looks like a tiny grape. Is that a cranberry? Sure, what that is. I'm not sure what that is either. Is that a tomato? I guess that's another birthday. They, had, they brought a sparkler out. That's illegal where I live. <laughs> that's awesome. Used to be legal, not anymore. But anyway, uh, yeah, that seems to be their birthday song here. I don't, I've never heard that song, but everybody else seems to know it here in the Netherlands. Uh, they have their own birthday song. That's pretty good. Cool. Anyway, uh, back to what I was saying here. We got uh, whipped cream, ice cream, chocolate sauce, some berries. Looks like there's graham cracker on the plate too. I'm not sure what this is. Let's see. Some sort of fruit or I don't know what it is. Let's see what it is. What is that? Some sort of fruit. I don't know what it is. All right, I'm going to finish up this dessert and then um, we'll head back up to the room and we'll wind up this video. Spectacular day overall. Weather has uh, been another struggle. The rain and the wind, and that's been the ongoing theme of this uh, whole trip every single day. And it's going to continue tomorrow. Uh, I just looked at the forecast and it looks like even more rain than today. It's going to be cold and windy again all day long this time. I'm hoping for a break in the weather because uh, there's uh, some rides I didn't get to today because of the weather. And if it's the same weather all day long tomorrow, I, uh, I, I might not be able to get on those rides, which is, um, which sucks. <laughs> but uh, it is what it is. But um, there's still plenty more to see tomorrow. So um, anyway, I'm going to finish up this dessert and then we'll head upstairs and do, do a wind up, wrap it all up with a nice shiny little bow. Well, sort of. So we'll see you after dessert. This is really good, by the way. All right, back up on the room. We're going to uh, wind up this day here. And uh, by the way, dinner was about 35 euros and 25 cents. Uh, plus I left a, a few dollars for a tip as well. Um, but anyway, uh, spectacular day overall. Uh, Efteling blew it out of, out of the park, blew it out of the water, whatever the expression is. But I'm so tired right now. Oh my gosh, I can, I can hardly think straight. But uh, speaking of that, good news is I'm finally going to get a decent night's sleep tonight. Uh, uh, so I'm going to be heading to bed and uh, getting eight, nine hours of sleep. So looking forward to that. But uh, anyway, um, I was, I've, I've been looking forward to visiting this park for a long time. And uh, the room's nice. The room's nice. Uh, I was expecting a little bit more as far as the theming goes, but it's not bad. It's in the uh, Everything that comes with it and the service is, is what really makes it. So uh, the two days park admission, breakfast is included, and, uh, and the shuttle service and all of that, it makes it worth it. So uh, really nice. Yeah, I enjoyed it. And it's walking distance to the park. And, uh, but uh, the, the big uh, problem today and, and that's been ongoing is the weather. The weather, nothing we can do about that. Uh, pouring rain. It was really cold today. I, even I bundled up with four layers on. I was still pretty cold at the end of the night. And tomorrow I think it looks like it's going to rain even more. It's going to rain all day long tomorrow and super windy too again. So that's been a constant battle with the rain and the cold and the wind. And uh, it's not going to let up anytime soon apparently. So uh, 
Um, anyway, we'll deal with it as it comes. So tomorrow we'll be back in the park and try to check out everything else that I didn't see today. Fingers crossed I can get on those coasters. Uh, we'll try. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's closed again because the weather's not looking good. Uh, it says when the park opens, it's 100% chance of rain with like wind at 20 to 30 miles an hour. So it's, <laughs> it's going to be brutal. But uh, we'll deal with it as it comes. So anyway, um, overall though, great, uh, great experience. And I uh, had a little travel hiccup with the, uh, with the scheduling on the train this morning. But we, it all worked out, so it's all fine. So anyway, um, we're going to wrap up this video. It's been a long day and uh, heading to bed now. So uh, at least just one more thing to say. That's right. Get out there and explore your world. We'll see you in the next video.